Hi everybody and thank you for joining me. In this video we are looking at money. We're going to look at some tips and tricks on how to avoid problems when we're dealing with money and look at some of the calculations and methods that we need to use. I hope you enjoy. <music> I want to start by looking at some of the simple mistakes that we need to avoid when we are handling questions on money. So let's have a look at this amount here. We've got two pounds and 60 pence. Now, if we are going to write this amount correctly, we'd put the pound sign, the two pounds, the decimal point and the 60. And that is probably the best way of writing two pounds 60 but you could also convert the £2.60 into pence if you needed to for a question and we're going to be having a look at that shortly. If you were to convert into pence then rather than writing £2.60 you would write 260 pence. Either of these two is a correct way of writing money 260 pence might look a little strange but it's okay the one thing we have to avoid is actually writing two pound 60 and then putting the pence on the end as well this is actually regarded as incorrect so be careful if you have the pound sign and the decimal point you don't have the pence if you are simply going to put an answer in pence it's just the p on the end and if we're not careful, another error can occur when we are actually using a calculator to work with money. Let's have a look at a simple sum. Let's say you are shopping and you are buying two things in a shop and one of them costs £2.75 and the other item that you buy costs £3.05. Now, if you do this calculation without a calculator, 5 plus 5, you would put the naught down there and carry the 1. 7 plus nothing is 7, plus the 1 you've carried. That would be 80p. The decimal point goes in there, and 2 plus 3 is 5. So the answer is £5.80. However, we just need to take care when we are using a calculator. Watch what happens if I put this sum into the calculator. So it's 2.75 and we want to add to that 3.05. Now when we press the equals, we see we have 5.8. Now this is because a calculator cannot know that you are working in money. And the danger is that you leave the answer as 5.8. But of course it is money. 5.8 doesn't make any sense and it's really important that you remember to put the zero on the end. So at the beginning there I talked about writing money as either pounds or pence and also mentioned that you might want to convert between the two. So let's have a look at why you might want to do this. You might well get a question on money where they are talking in both pounds and pence. And in order to maybe add something up, you have to convert between the two. Let's then have a look at how we do this, and then we'll have a look at a couple of examples. So, if we have £2.60, that is written as pounds. Two pounds, decimal point, and 60. But you may want to convert this to pence, maybe so that you can add it to something else. The method we use for converting from pounds to pence is to multiply by 100. So two pounds 60 multiplied by 100 turns it into 260 pence. If you want to do the opposite, let's say you have 187 pence and you want to convert it into pounds, then you would divide by 100 and that would give you the answer 1.87 which is £1.87 
And the reason we do this, of course, is because one pound is equal to 100 pence. Now let's have a look at why it is so important that we're able to convert between pounds and pence. Here's a question which I'm going to do on the calculator, but I'm going to do it without first converting, just to show the problems that can happen. Juan has bought a calculator costing £7.95 and also a pen costing 72 pence. Now, if I look at the numbers, I have 7.95 and I have 72. But if I put these into the calculator, so that's 7.95, and to that we are adding 72, the answer it gives me is £79.95. Now I'm sure you can see that something costing £7.95 being added to 72p cannot be £79.95. And the problem here is that we haven't converted one of these two amounts so that they are in the same units. The calculator thinks we have added £7.95 to £72. So how might we have done this more correctly? Well, if we are going to work this problem out in pounds, then £7.95 is fine. But 72p needs converting into pounds and we said that converting into pounds we divide by 100 so that is the sum you would have to do first 72 divided by 100 will give you the answer 0.72 now what that is is 72 pence converted into pounds it is no pounds 72 pence Let's try putting that into our calculator. So we have 7.95. Now this time we are going to add 0 0.72. And if we hit the answer button, we get £8.67, which is in fact the correct answer. So in order to be able to put this into a calculator, we have said, OK, we are going to do this question in pounds. But this part over here, the 72 is in pence. So the first thing we do is convert it into pounds. We divide it by 100. That gives us the same amount in pounds. And then we are able to add the two amounts together with or without a calculator and come to the same answer. Now, here's a question where we actually have to change the answer to a sum in order to answer the question. Tina wants to buy a chocolate bar for 95p and a drink for 85p. She has £2 in her pocket and we're being asked, can she afford both items? Well, of course, the first thing you want to do is add the 95p and the 85p together. If we do that, we get the answer of 180 pence. Now, we are told she has two pound in her pocket, so in order to find out whether she can afford the items, we need to convert the 180 pence into pounds. So how do we do that? Well, again, we divide by 100, and 180 divided by 100 is 1.8, or in money, 1.80. Don't forget the zero on the end. Therefore, 180p is £1.80. If she has £2 in her pocket, then the answer would be yes, she can afford to buy both items. You will notice I'm using a calculator for some of these questions. The good news is that multiplying or adding amounts of money is exactly the same on a calculator as if you were using whole numbers. So a question like this, Phil spends 25 pounds, 25 pence per month on his mobile phone. How much will he spend in a year? Well, for that, you need to multiply the amount by 12, 12 months in a year. And in a calculator, you would put in exactly the same. So 25 pounds, decimal point, and 25 pence and you would multiply it by 12. Press the equal sign 
and there's your answer. Now the answer there is 303. Remember what we said earlier, the calculator does not know you are handling money, therefore it is 303. And if you're going to be totally correct, you would show that there are no pence in the answer, 303 pounds. And there we go, quite a few things to think about. Remember to add the zero onto the end when you're using a calculator. And the best thing is to remember the method of converting from pence to pounds as you'll need that quite a lot. Hope that was useful. Please do subscribe and have a look at some of the other videos on my channel.